We are so lucky to have each other. We have different point of views and, and different techniques and different way of doing art. Even though he's a native artist, I'm a non-indigenous artist. But when we come together to do something, we are aligned with the energy of it all. We're trying to teach to the world different nations, different colors could get together and be equal. I belong to a, a medicine lodge and we're called the Medewin, so we're medicine healing people. Our basic teaching is from the rock paintings, which they say is 30,000 years old. All those teachings I, I put in my paintings, love, respect, honesty, truth, wisdom, bravery, and humility. Creativity is, is an incredible thing. We all have that in us. And I always say it's magic. It just, you know, paint itself. My spirit name is uh, Muskeke No Den, which is medicine wind. So then when I had my name, I felt like I have to share whatever I know and teach the young kids. Friends United is reviving our culture back. We all, at some point in our life, need that moment that somebody says, I believe in you. Hello and welcome to the Friends United International Convention Center in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada. I'm in conversation today with two fabulous artists, Helena Stupira and Jay Bell Redbird. And they really are a great representation of what's going on in this center and this initiative. So welcome to you both. Thank you, Thank you. for welcoming us. I'm so excited to have this chat and to share your story with others. So who would like to step up and tell me about how the two of you met? Oh yes, we're starting with romance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was seven years ago and a few months. And uh, that of course was at the powwow in Toronto. Uh, where I would go with my friends and uh, always loving the native culture, wanted to always see more. And then uh, it, it was a, a lots of other events leading to this moment that I met Jay. It's, it's like always in life that is the chain of, of events that directed me in front of his booth with his beautiful art. Mm -hmm. And when he stood there in front of this beautiful big painting and talking about the meaning, that was actually, I remember that was the story about the loon, how it is um, a leader and also um, about loyalty to yourself, to, to others and, and to who you really are. And that really grabbed my attention. <laughs> so that was the first moment. And then uh, that was actually a very interesting day. I would call even magical because not only that I met Jay that day, but this is the day that Jay met Rolf as well. Really? Oh, wow. So you want to continue with that story with Rolf? Yes. And I would like to hear your perspective when this beautiful woman showed up in front of your booth and you used your pickup line on her. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I used my uh, native voice. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I met her there and uh, I'm, I'm a very uh, shy guy. So I told her, I said, I do a lot of uh, art shows and I have a email book. Would you like to uh, sign it? And I will invite you to one of my openings. So she did, and um, uh, I looked at the name, and I thought, wow, that's an unusual name. And then she laughed, and, and then I uh, peeked my head outside the, the booth, and I was like, whoa, who's that? And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, I got a request on Facebook, <laughs> like about three weeks later, and I thought, well, that name sounds so familiar. So then I looked at my email book and I thought, oh, that's the lady that, so I accepted. And then that's how we uh, met again through the uh, powwow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you met at the powwow, but then it was an online um, connection that fostered the that relationship. Too, that yeah. initial curiosity, is this yeah. person even, you know, available or, in, you yeah. know, in that regards. But then later it became more than just that. This is a life-changing uh, moment. Not only that you met this other person, but also you being directed in in your new, completely new approach to life. Uh, and and I was always dreaming about this moment that I could actually be in line with my own spirit and do what I was born to do, actually, which is art. Um, I couldn't do it before because as a single mom, you had to provide, you have to have a good job, which I was, and I was really happy doing what I was doing. But deep down inside, I was waiting for that right moment to, for that artist to reemerge or emerged. And, uh, and there she was. <laughs> That's so interesting. So that same day, so Jay, you were already doing art, mm -hmm. but that same day yeah. was like a switching of tracks or, or directions for both of you in a way. Exactly. I think all of us have this um, purpose, this, this sparkle of, of spirit that is in us, but sometimes life covers it because there's things that we have to do instead of the things that we were born to do. And then we're waiting for that right moment. It's not always that you can do that or it takes time to evolve and to that moment that you are strong enough to say, now I'm going to live the way I, I wanted to. Oh, hallelujah. Yay. I love Thank the you. way you put it. And Jay, that was the day, the same day you met Helena, you met Rolf. Tell me about how that changed your direction. Well, well, working in, in the movie industry, and then I left, and I opened a gallery in Toronto, and then um, they had an upcoming powwow uh, celebration of dancing, native dancing, and then um, my friend called me and said that uh, I paid your way into the, uh, to the event for the booth, and then... I said, well, you should have discussed that with me because that's a lot of money that, uh, to get in that I got to pay back. And uh, so I went and, and then that's when I met a gentleman and he came in and he seen a big painting, six feet by four feet. Uh, I told him the price and as a lot of people say is, uh, okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> so he left and a couple hours later he came back and he says, I'll buy that painting. And I said, sorry, I sold it. So he was kind of surprised that it was like $10,000 for that painting. So, and then we made the connection. He said, I just went to uh, a gallery the previous day and I bought a painting of a blue jay with surrounded by uh, uh, people, like a family. That's what it represented. So and uh, he said he bought the painting and he's going, I'm amazed that I just met you the next day and to meet the artist. And that was uh, Rolf Bowman. And then uh, he came, he, he looked at all the other prices and he said, I'll buy everything. So then I didn't have to worry about paying back that bill. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. That was a good day for many reasons. Yeah. And then after... Um, I was like, who is this guy, right? And he left the booth and I peeked and I was like, who is that guy? <laughs> and then we started connecting after the powwow and then he invited me to Friends United and then I came to Friends United a couple months later after that. And uh, I was amazed at all the uh, artwork he had here. And the feeling here was so nice and uh, relaxing. Do you remember the way he described it to you when he first told you about it, his, this initiative? Not really. It was basically like you have to come and see it, right? You know, I've been to a lot of uh, centers and uh, institutions and galleries of Native art. And, and, uh, but this is like the biggest, you know, private owned building that I've ever seen with a whole bunch of art work. Well, I think the national chief said that he hasn't seen anything like it in Canada. Yeah. Which is pretty extraordinary. 
but I, I think that um, you're so right that you have to visit it to understand it because you can't quite wrap your mind around it before you walk in the door and see and feel it and experience it really. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So what does this whole project mean to you in your lives now? Well, the, the center means a lot to me. The Friends United is, is incredible. Like you said, you have to come and see it for yourself because the feeling you get is really extraordinary, especially for artists that um, has so, so much to still come up with. You know, it's all brewing there. And then sometimes you are in a place that triggers uh, that creative spark. So to me, that was that, the atmosphere and energy of this place that was telling me, now you have to measure up to all this in your, for yourself first. And so you, you gain your confidence uh, as an artist. Because me coming to it late in life, I had to overcome all kinds of self-imposed obstacles. But being here and, and seeing all, all this, it's, it's incredible. That place really fosters creativity and, and new ideas. And also the exchange of it with other artists. Um, me as non-indigenous artist, uh, I've always had uh, incredible respect and adoration for native culture. I think we have so much to learn from it. Uh, lots of things were forgotten. How to be with yourself and in this world uh, in a, such a peaceful um, and, and loving uh, ways. So to me, that was the um, indication uh, of the direction I should take with my art, which is pointing out the, the best in, in, in native culture, but also um, combine it with um, other views and see how much commonality it is instead of differences. So I was always looking for what binds us together rather than what differences we have. So that was my approach. And then collaborating with, with Jay was really incredible because that just shows that in, in spite of being from different cultures, we can collaborate together and come up with something that is so meaningful in so many ways. I love that positive focus. It's like a lens on the camera, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so, it, it's so positive and so inspiring. Um, when you think about Friends United, the word united really represents so much of what happens here because it's, for me, there's so much about connection mm -hmm. that is happening in this place. Yeah, it's, it's all about unity and connections and exchange of it and sharing it. Mm -hmm. So when it's shared, it grows, it evolves into something more. Mm -hmm. So gathering places are very important for people, for artists for business people, for everybody. And when I say connection, what does that spark for you, Jay? I like the uh, idea that, um, you know, that Helena, we do collaboration together. And uh, I have never thought of my wildest dreams that I would meet somebody from another part of uh, the world. Poland, in this Poland, case, yeah. Uh, European, so it, it's... Uh, I feel really nice that I could connect with the Europeans and Helena, European and a First Nation, uh, doing art together, which is about pretty much love and nature and uh, all the uh, truth, honesty, wisdom, bravery, and we connect together and combine our art together and we could share that. And uh, what a perfect place to be, uh, Friends United. So like... Helena and Jay United. No. <laughs> Jaylena. Jaylena. I love it. Um, I feel like uh, the conversations I'm having here are really leading me to the conclusion that this is very much this project, not bigger than just the center, but the whole initiative is about uh, building a bridge 
from prejudice to reverence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, moving from this ridiculous uh, lack of respect for what our First Nations um, people represent in our country to actually revering your connection to nature, to the land, to um, yourselves perhaps, and to your culture. And there's so much that all Canadians can learn from that. And I'm not trying to be corny or, you know, uh, any, or Pollyannish, but I really believe that every Canadian child could learn so much from this center. Yes. Do you feel like you are a teacher these days? Yes. Uh, I did an art show uh, last year in Toronto, and I had a young girl come up to me about, uh, I'd say maybe 11, and uh, with her mother, and then the mother came to me and says, oh, my daughter wants to say something to you. So I listened to her, and she introduced herself, and she said, we had a, a project to do in school about uh, Indigenous Native artists in Canada, United States, and she says, I picked you, so I did a project of you. So I almost had a little tear in my eye, but I was uh, honored for this little girl to uh, do a big project of me. And then uh, she asked me, she said, can, can I take a little, can I take a picture with you? And I felt so like happy for her. And you could just see the happiness that she met this artist that she did a project about. So that was very moving. So I like to do that, is to share. And um, yeah, I also like share in schools and I set up easels and discuss my what the meetings are and colleges and universities. And, and it's also nice that I could share uh, in hospitals. I'm in two hospitals. And uh, so people will connect with me and, and they'll just, uh, send me a message, say that I seen your art and uh, the hospital, and it was so nice to see that healing, loving work on the walls there, when people are going through a hard time in the hospitals. You know, I met a I met a gentleman. His wife was um, get, uh, having birth, and but they had a C-section, and they told him to leave the room, and they they she was going through complications. So he went down to the cafeteria and then he seen a picture of mine that was getting auctioned for the hospital. So he, he told me that he admired that and he searched for that strength for his wife to go through the pregnancy and for him to calm down, everything will be okay. And then he went upstairs to see and uh, she was okay. And I had a beautiful baby girl and he reached out through me through um, email and then he wanted to meet me. So I invited him to the house and then I went to his house and met the little girl and the wife and, and I did a beautiful painting for them in honor. And so it's nice like that to go through that and to share like even here at Friends United is I love sharing with the uh, artists here, you know. They're up and coming, and but I could show them techniques, and so that's how I feel that I'm put on this earth is to share and talk about the meanings and pass it on. And then you could also see the people's uh, change, right? They're like, "Whoa, who's this guy?" No, <laughs> no. he's weird. No, that's what I said the first time I met you. No, I think that's. Uh, that's astounding impact to see your work have that kind of an emotional impact on people. And my way of looking at it is that a painting is not just, you know, paint on a canvas, but your spirit or your love soul, yeah. or your soul, yeah, is actually coming through. Whatever you put into it, when someone with an open heart stands in front of it, he feels it. They receive it, which is you can almost notice that process. When we paint, we make sure that we paint in a state of peace and, and joy, rather than restrictions and, and, and rules. So we feel that this energy 
was there and people are looking at it, they feel the joy and inspiration for their own lives. So they could do their own, you know, uh, amazing things in life. It's like a, your vibration comes through the painting. Yeah. So I'd love to talk about the, the business side of this in a way, because what I'm witnessing is that so many of the artists who are being um, helped by Rolf Bauman and Friends United are entrepreneurs now. You know, they, they start with their art and they grow it. And it's sort of like it's a business mentorship in a way. Can you tell me about that perspective? Well, it is a process. So initially we needed to feel this uh, confidence and uh, Rolf was amazing from the, from the very beginning to tell us what he thinks of our art and uh, how much potential it is and direct us in a way that we, we could focus on the art but with open minds to what else we can do. Um, being supported by, by Rolf, not just because of the financial or the fact that he would supply us with art su supplies, <laughs> uh, but also ideas of where else that art could go. So we always do the, the show, shows uh, all over the place and, and feel that we have to share this with, uh, with you know, out there world. It's like a mission? Definitely, yes. It's, it's a process. It's something that evolves and grows. And, um, but it wouldn't, ha it wouldn't be the way it is now if it wasn't for that, you know, it, like it's like a, your backbone almost that is so supportive and, and believing in, in you. Um, I think every artist needs some, someone that believes in, in them. So, um, we feel very lucky and grateful for that uh, uh, support. Ralph, Ralph um, is an amazing uh, gentleman to all the uh, artists that come in here, and he likes the, uh, the, uh, the up-and-coming artists that aren't really established yet, and so it feels like that he wants to help them and be part of their journey of becoming a successful artists and uh, have a good business and those artists could take care of their families and which I've seen that already have been done. And uh, I tell the artists that um, um, you have a great opportunity with Ralph and take that don't don't abuse it and you could travel all over the world by with your art and for instance like us we've been uh, we showed at Miami we showed at Fort Lauderdale um, I show at McMichael Gallery very prestige gallery there and um, so I, I tell the artists that this is what you could become you know just have that passion and believe in yourself and don't think of it as money, 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 because then you'll see that in your art, right? Mm -hmm. So I've seen Ralph uh, change a lot of artists' lives, you know, even for me, right? And uh, even though I still do other shows all over the place, and um, but Ralph is uh, a real uh, believer, and it's like there's a, uh, I tell Ralph, I say, you know, there's a famous native artist called Norval Morriso, and uh, a lot of people say that I'm the next Norval Morriso, and Norval Morriso got discovered by Pollock, and then that made Norval, and then I said to Ralph, I says, you could be the one, you know, that discovered me, even though I was established already, but his name could be beside me, and that would be such a amazing thing in 100, 200 years that Mr. Bowman and Redbird connected together and... Uh, friends United. Yes, Friends United. And uh, it's amazing, yeah. 
So I always encourage the artists to, you know, Ralph is helping you take off. Now it's time for you to soar and show your magic to the world. That's a beautiful image. That's a beautiful image. Um, and, I, and I can't help but think that when you say he's changed people's lives, um, I'm sure there are artists who, who, artists who have come and have been through hardship and difficulty in their lives, struggle. And is this, do you think this is a chance sometimes to turn a, a life around? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. And you've seen that happen? Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen it. And I've seen also some artists, uh, you know, when we invite them, when Rolf invites them down, they'll message me and they'll say, something's up here. Yes. Like, I, I don't want to come because I think something's up. So it's their decision, but then I think they lost out. <laughs> But do you understand that? Because it's I, good I, to be true. I really think that's exactly what I think the theme seems to be, that a lot of people, when they meet him, and I'm sure I had this uh, image a little bit, like, okay, this is too good to be true. What's going on, really? And then I love hearing from people like you who've been associated with him for a long time and who, along the journey, have come to the conclusion very sincerely and firmly, wow, no, he really is this good, and it's, it is true. And that's a beautiful story of generosity. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, and a lot of the artists will come down, he invites them, and he'll put them in a, a place to stay, in a home or hotel, and then he'll give them a vehicle to use, and then he'll supply them with canvases and paints, and a lot of great opportunity Ruff does for the artists. And is it, is it right that he had the idea for people to create prints of their art to sort of broaden its reach? Can you tell me about that? Well, it's, it's wonderful. You know, when you paint something, you, sometimes you attach to it, but, and then you let it go. Sort of, you have to. But having a print, uh, it's so incredible because you have it for yourself, for your own, um, for, for your collection, but also, you have so much more to share uh, with, with the world. It means it's accessible to people who wouldn't be able to afford your, you know, you mentioned a, a huge painting that was $10,000. Not everyone has that kind of cash lying around for one of your beautiful paintings, Jay. And yet it gives them the ability to put your spirit on their wall. Yeah, it, it helped. Uh, like I did a 11 day show and uh, I sold a lot of originals, but the prints helped too because I made close to $7,000 just on those prints. Thank you to Ralph, right? And yeah, it's affordable for the people that can't afford original. That's yeah. a true sharing, you know? And so we open an online gallery called Redbird Gallery, and we sell a lot of our signed prints on there. We signed them and number them and... Beautiful. What is your hope for this project? For the future of this project? I would like um, more, um, more of the, uh, the indigenous peoples to, to find their culture and uh, want to learn their language and their ceremonies. And when you come here, you could feel that. And I've seen a lot of artists uh, want to get connected more to the, to the culture and the history and to ceremonies. And to share, too, with, uh, you know, the Europeans and the, uh, the Canadians that come here. And, and we could all combine together, you know, we have the, our heartbeats the same, our blood's the same color. So we could be friends united. Unite together. This is great direction, right? Like you said, to find yourself and to be proud where you're from and what is your roots and how you perceive the world. Because there is so much more to be done in this world. And it is that, that dual purpose to connect indigenous people 
to their culture, but also for the broader, you know, country, the Canadians out there, all of whom should should understand and and appreciate our deep roots and 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 how much you've played a role in what Canada is. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to uh, that you know we're coming back. You know, we uh, we were like the the first nation to get try to they demolish us, right? So I, I'm grateful to be here, and because uh, of my ancestors made me, they fought for me to be here, and now I'm here, and now I could share to the young indigenous people to be proud to learn your culture go to ceremonies and pass that on and you know we could our teachings are universal you know a lot of our teachers told us to keep it a secret now there's problems now they want us to share so now i could go to schools and share and i could share it to anybody and uh, do you feel that the world, the sense that there's a hunger, that the world needs your teachings now? I find, yeah, 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 I find it. It's, I, I get a lot of uh, requests to uh, teach about the paintings and, you know, it's all about the love, honesty, truth, wisdom, bravery, humility and uh, call it the seven grandfather teachings. So I, I incorporate all those meanings into one painting and then I get to share. You know, I like to uh, even go to little, uh, to the kids like grade one and two and, and talk to them about it and, and do paintings for schools. I've done big murals for schools and uh, the kids are, uh, drawn to the color, <laughs> the brightness, so then they, they want to learn a little bit more of it. So it's, and I love to share. Again, I love to share, you know. It needs to be. Beautiful principle of life that we all benefit from knowing and uh, implementing that, that in, in your own life. Uh, mostly reverence to nature and environment and and then feeling as it is a, a living uh, entity rather than something that you can just take advantage of. And I, I feel when I, when I hear Jay describe talking to those little children, I see an image of them going home excitedly mm -hmm. and wanting to share that with their family, with their friends. And, and I see that as sharing light. Yeah. You are bringing light. Yeah. And that is really powerful. You, so you're as much a teacher, perhaps, as you are an artist now. And maybe that's partly what an artist is, a teacher. But you've done a lot of different things in your life. Yeah. Can you give me a brief description of, of all of the things that have brought you to this place? Well, I was a uh, junior horseshoe champion of Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> that? I did not know. Is he telling the truth? When he was 12, okay. A horseshoe champion? Yeah. I have missed the whole purpose of this interview. That should have been our focus. <laughs> That's great. But you grew up in a mostly urban setting. Yeah, I grew up in uh, the city and uh, surrounded by uh, beautiful uh, Aboriginal people, strong people, uh, role models and um, I even remember going to uh, Sussex Drive with my father because he was friends with Pierre Trudeau. So we went there for his birthday. And so even like Hank, I met Glenn Campbell, John Denver, Johnny Cash with my father. Who was a, who was a, a well-known artist. Well-known artist, poet, uh, a writer, a producer. And uh, so I grew up with that with my father so I was very uh, honored to do that. And a lot of uh, indigenous people don't, didn't have that chance. And, uh, you know, I remember just uh, my favorite sandwich is a toasted Western sandwich because Glenn Campbell asked me if I was hungry. 
And I said, yes. And so he said, here's a Tosa Western sandwich, which I never heard of. And then I was just like, wow, that's my favorite sandwich. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> and um, just to uh, learn my uh, ceremonies, you know, go fasting in the woods, four days, no eating, no drinking water, and um, even sitting up in a, a tree 12 feet up, uh, eight feet long, six feet wide, and just staying there for two nights and uh, learning about the culture and the history and the sacred songs and going for walking across Canada with the water walkers, Josephine, and um, learning about the sweat lodges, learning all about those levels. Uh, in the sweat lodges, like there's four um, levels and it's the branches. One branch will go around, the other one will go around, so four times. So it's all about the four directions, the four races, the four seasons, the four, uh, our uh, life cycle, child, teenager, adult, elderly, love it all, right? Honor it all. So, and that helped me a lot too through my paintings is to, to learn all those. So I combine it and put it in my paintings and share to the world. And you're a poet as well? No, no, I'm not a poet. My father's the famous one, but I have him beat on paintings. And um, I did write a poem once, and uh, <laughs> but it wasn't, uh, it was an angry Can you poem. Recite it for no, us? no, it was no. angry. <laughs> it was an angry poem about how hard it was for our peoples to be here. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, when you talk about growing up in, in sort of a privileged way in relation to a lot of Indigenous youth, I think about an interview I did with Oprah Winfrey, and she gave me a quote that was very meaningful to her and has been her whole life. And that is, I think it's originally from a, a biblical reference. And she said, she always thinks about this idea that from those to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. And I hear you speaking of your, your privileged upbringing, and I see how much you're giving back now, how much you are bringing light to others and to, to you know, people in your culture and others. Yeah, thank you. That's what, on, on the back of my paintings, I always like, my lines mean to not judge other cultures or religions, which means in our teachings with the rock paintings was not to judge other tribes or their language, but that's thousands of years ago, so times have changed. So I switched it to not judge other cultures or religions because I was taught that all creation stories are true. So no, not to judge other cultures or their teachings and to live that good way of living, walk that good way, talk that good way of living and pass it on and peace and love. And then I sign my name. Wow, that's powerful. No wonder it has an impact on people. I, I heard recently that um, it was a conversation about ego, and the point that was made was whenever we catch ourselves feeling inferior or superior to anyone else, whether it's a tribe, as you say, or another person or a group of people, a country, Whenever there's a feeling of superiority or inferiority, that's ego. Yeah, big time, yeah. And I feel like that's clear. In your art, I feel like there is not a sense of ego. Yeah, I used to say that like as a joke, um, you know, you're not supposed to have an ego, right? It's not good for your spirit inside and your energy around you. People will feel that. So I tell people, I said, I used to have an ego no, jeez, I forgot how I said that. Oh, my ego used to have an ego. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What's your, I'm just, I'm just curious um, as we're wrapping up, what's your process in creating art together? Because that seems like 
uh, it, it, it seems like a strange way to put it, but that's mm -hmm. like a making love of kinds, you know, to yeah, create so. together is beautiful. Yeah, we discuss, we, we just feel each other, and, and um, I usually start. We, we, we talk about it before yeah. we do the piece. Right. So whether it's, it's a scenery or is it a particular person, uh, when I paint this, this particular person, a hero or, or a warrior, chief, it, it seems like he's missing something. And then to, to make him more powerful and meaningful, Jay adds his element, and that becomes full and, and uh, meaningful. A lot of artists tell me that y you have uh, kahunas because it's so hard to two artists to do on the same page, right? So a lot of artists congratulate us to do it together because they think it's impossible, hard to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's okay and, you know, most of the times I'll give suggestions and she'll say no because... Uh, <laughs> Hear me, hear me roar, hear me roar. <laughs> yeah. You whisper and she roars, is that how it goes? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, it's really inspiring, the, the way you do art together, and I think it is representative in, or symbolic in such a beautiful way. Thank you, Nancy. It has many more projects ahead. All right. Brewing. Yes. Thank you. And we can't wait to see what you're going to bring us. And I would like to just sign off with uh, Uga Muga Skinny Wobble. That means have a good day. <laughs> no, I just made that up. And that's all. All right. Well, I thank you so much both for sharing with me today and for sharing your light with the world and um, being such a, an important part of Friends United. Thank, thank you. you that's much. a pleasure. All right, thank you. Thank you.